Hello friends, welcome back to my piano lessons. In the last video, we had looked at few key features that you should look for in your piano when you're buying one. I hope you found that video useful and you've gone ahead and made your purchase. As promised in the last video, we will hit the ground running from today. If you like the contents, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and also email me on the email address given here. Three key points before we begin. The first one is the sitting posture. Make sure you sit upright on the piano stool. Keep a little distance from the piano when you sit in front of it so that your thighs don't go under the piano. Keep a sufficient distance. Also adjust the stool height such that your elbow remains at a little higher level than the piano keys. The second key point is the finger numbering. Our fingers will be numbered as follows. The thumb at number one, followed by the index finger at number two, the middle finger at three, the ring finger at four, and the pinky at five. Universally, this is the numbering used to indicate which fingers to be used to play a particular key. The right use of finger pattern or the finger positions is very important to be able to play a piece comfortably. And the third key point is to curve your fingers when you play. So imagine that you're holding a ball and you have to hold it while you're playing the piano. So curve it to that level. Curving your fingers makes sure that all your fingers are equidistant from the piano keys and you also get to make efficient use of your thumb. Next, let us see the layout of the keyboard. The keyboard are made of white and black keys with the black keys being in pairs of two and three. As you go to the left side of the keyboard, the tone goes lower in pitch and as you go to the right side of the piano, the tone goes higher in the pitch. The piano keys are named for the first seven letters of the alphabet, starting from A until G. The position of a white key is recognized by its relative position to the black keys. For example, the piano key A is the rightmost key sandwiched between the three black keys. Similarly, you can recognize the other keys as shown in this picture. So go ahead and try to identify all the keys throughout the piano. As we know, the piano pattern repeats. So try identifying all the A's, all the B's, all the C's in your piano. Overall, on an 88 key piano, the leftmost white key is A and the C that comes towards the middle of the piano keyboard is called the middle C. Now let us practice the right hand C position. Keep your thumb or finger number one of your right hand on the middle C and let the rest of the fingers fall naturally on the white keys following the middle C. Keep your fingers curved and be relaxed. We'll now see how to write music on a sheet. Notes for this C position is written on a treble staff. A treble staff has five lines and four spaces. A treble staff is denoted by a treble clef. The middle C is written below the treble staff on a piece of line which is called the ledger. The D note is written on the space below the treble staff. We can see how this is written on a treble staff in the picture shown here. We now have a few warm-up exercises for the right hand. Uh, let us play each one of them one by one. Please remember that when you play the notes, play them in a connected way and in a smooth fashion. Playing notes in a connected and smooth fashion is called legato.
Similarly, we have the left hand C position. In this position, place your fifth finger on your left hand, which is your pinky, on the C note that is lower to the middle C on the keyboard. Let the rest of the fingers fall on the notes naturally next to the C. That forms your C position for the left hand. Notes for this position is written on the bass staff. The bass staff also has five lines and four spaces in between them. And the bass staff is denoted by a bass clef. The C position or the C note is written on the second space in the bass staff. The D note is written on the line above the second space. Similarly, every higher note is written on the space or line following the previous note. We now have a similar set of warm-up exercises for your left hand. Similar to how we played the right hand warm-up exercises, play this in a smooth and connected fashion that is play this legato. Keep your fingers curved and be relaxed. You can download all these exercises that I've shown in this video from the links given in the description below. I will leave you to explore the left hand warm up exercises and if you have any questions feel free to ask them on the comments below or just send me an email. In the next class we will make use of the concepts that we have learned today to play a few songs. Please stay tuned for the next lesson and in the meanwhile please ensure that you are comfortable with the warm up exercises for both the right and the left hand. Until then, goodbye. Thank you.